I, I want to do a mini kind of life course on that, right? So, so, so you've kind of walked a path of of being in alignment with what sounds like your soul, in alignment with your voice. And yes. so, for those who are, you know, as you said, you know, you, um, you know, you kind of followed what you wanted to do. You were curious, and you avoided the naysayers. Easy to say difficult for many to do. If you had to break that down into kind of, you know, three pieces of, 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 of guidance to mentor someone, how to tap into that into themselves, what would those three things be? One would be to always remember that life is long and you are going to fail. And I certainly failed at different things, but I didn't let the failure define me. Rather, I learned from the failure. The second thing that I that I would recommend is that you you do listen to the naysayers because they do have sometimes they do have good things to say. Yeah. And you can want to twist that. So don't automatically put your blinders on where you become you think you're right all the time. And I th I think the third thing is is to really just enjoy the journey. Right. Yeah. And 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 do it for the right reasons, not the wrong reasons. Like I never followed the path because, oh, I'm going to do this because it'll make a lot of money. I followed the things that I was interested in. And suddenly people found it interesting and they were willing to pay and be like, buy my book and things like that. I didn't set out to say, oh, I'm going to write this book so I can become a bestseller. It was more like I'm going to write this book because I think it has something to say. Yeah. And hopefully people will agree with it. So I think those are the things I would focus on. No, I appreciate that. And, and let me ask you a question. When you're one of the things I find is, um, you know, I've always kind of um, evolved what I've done in business in, in, in what makes me feel fulfilled. And when I'm fulfilled and in alignment, I can't explain it so, but things just kind of will flow through me, right? When I'm in alignment, I can, when I'm coaching people, I have a, I'm a business coach and uh, you know, things just kind of flow through me because, and I don't necessarily always know where it comes from, but I'm yeah. able to give, I'm allow, I'm able to give it to people that I'm coaching and it helps them get unstuck. So when you're in your space, are you able to allow things to flow through you? And do you kind of tap into a universal energy that allows you to kind of keep going? Absolutely. I mean, that's why I've been a professor, you know, for, for the last 20 plus years. Uh, and not a, you know, what I love about being a professor is the mentorship and the guidance of students. Yeah. And it's really not about getting your ideas to the student. It's having the student figure out what they want to do and act as a mentor to yeah. them to help them guide them on their path. Yeah. Right? I've never wanted the student to follow my path. I give them suggestions about what's worked for me, what hasn't worked for me. But I am not their guide. I'm just right. a person to help them find their own path. I love and it. It does. It just if you if you remove yourself from it. Like one of my um, my mentors once said to me, she was a theater coach, and she always said, "Stowe, you just have to be true to the work." Yeah. And I and she goes, "We I tell my actors all the time, be true to the work." And at first, I had like no idea what she was talking about. Yeah. But then I realized by being true to the work, it's not about you; it's about what you're conveying to the audience to your student. Yeah. And when you remove your own personal things from it, then you're open to letting the message that you want to help the person you're trying to help work its way through. Yeah. Right. And, and, and creating the space for that to happen. Exactly. Is not correct. Yeah. No, I love that.